Good morning or afternoon, depending on where you're joining us from. I'm Dane Christensen, the Digital Marketing Manager at Grid Game Systems. I want to thank you all for taking the time to join us today for Apache Ignite Coding Examples uh, webinar with Dimitri Satrakin, who is one of the founders at Grid Game Systems, as well as a member of the Podling Project Management Committee for the Apache Ignite Incubating Project. Now, before we get into Dimitri's uh, presentation, I have just a few quick administrative points to make. Uh, Dimitri will be uh, demonstrating several coding examples for about 40 minutes, after which uh, we'll have about 15 minutes for Q&A. Now, you'll notice that just above the presentation screen is a questions button. Click there to ask uh, any question at any point during the presentation, and Dimitri will, will respond to your questions during the Q&A segment at the end. Uh, now, we may not have time to get to all of your questions during this event, but we'll definitely answer all of them afterwards. So please take advantage of this opportunity to ask questions from an expert in, in this uh, technology. Uh, also, if you would be so kind as to rate the webinar and or leave any comments in the questions area toward the end of the hour that will help us improve the material uh, for future events, that would be greatly appreciated. And so with that, uh, we're ready to turn the floor over to Dimitri Satrakin. Uh, Dimitri? Yes, thank you, Dane. And uh, hello, everyone. Uh, again, I'm uh, Dimitri Satrakin, one of the co-founders of Great Game. And I'm also part, uh, a member of PMC committee on Apache Ignite project. And uh, today we're going to have a fun webinar. It's going to be a bunch of uh, many coding examples about Apache Ignite. We'll also take a look at a overview and please do ask questions as they come up. I'll do my best to answer them uh, at the end. So uh, what we're going to be looking at today uh, is some examples. So Apache Ignite is a distributed memory uh, data fabric. So we're going to be looking at some examples doing clustering. Uh, we're going to do some cool stuff with compute grid, with data grid. And if we have at some time left at the end, I'll squeeze in streaming example. If not, then uh, there's going to be a part two of this webinar where we, where we will be doing more examples, and we will do streaming at that time uh, in that case. So let's take a look at what uh, Apache Ignite is before we start. Just a really quick overview. I know everyone wants to see the code. Uh, but essentially, uh, what Apache Ignite is, is a collection of uh, uh, a set of independent but yet very well integrated with each other components. Uh, and these components can be used independently from each other or they can be used together. So you don't have to use all of them. You can use uh, uh, just one of them and maybe later on uh, when a need comes, you maybe integrate a couple more. But all these components are uh, independent and can be used independently of each other. But the reason Apache Ignite provides uh, uh, this set of components is because we want to be uh, a one-point stop for most of your in-memory computing needs. Because whenever you move your application in memory, uh, most likely uh, you will hit certain use cases, like uh, you will probably need to distribute your data uh, in memory across your cluster. You will probably need uh, to transact on that data or to query that data. You may need to uh, compute on that data, maybe collocate some computations with the data. That's where integration between compute and data comes in, in this kind of type of collocation. You may need to do some map reduce, load balancing, scheduling, fault tolerance. All that is part of a compute grid. You may need to stream data into the system, maybe deploy a few cluster singleton, maybe uh, store a few files in memory. That's where a memory file system comes in. So all of these components are available in Apache Ignite. Unfortunately, we're not going to be talking about all of them. Uh, I will uh, mainly focus on compute and data grid today. And on the uh, following up uh, webinars on code and examples into Apache Net, we'll do uh, other components as well. So let's, uh, let's start with clustering and compute and uh, move our way down the stack. So essentially, when it comes to clustering, what's important to mention is that uh, the only purpose of clustering is that nodes can discover each other wherever, whichever environment uh, you deploy your cluster in. Some environments may or may not have multicast enabled. Some environments have TCP addresses that constantly change, like for instance Amazon web, uh, web services, or m most of the virtual environments actually would have TCP addresses change. Some environments uh, 
may actually not even have a uh, strong uh, networking. So you actually may need to discover over JDBC or over database, maybe over shared file system. So uh, all of that is actually uh, integrated into Ignite Discovery Protocol. And uh, Ignite can actually start in any cloud, uh, AWS, Google Compute Engine, a hybrid cloud. You can actually start a part of your cloud on your laptop. You can start your whole cloud, uh, your whole cluster on your laptop. And but as a matter of fact, during my coding example, today I'll be starting my whole cluster on my laptop. And another thing I would mention about clustering is zero deployment technology within Ignite. So with, uh, whenever you're working with Ignite, uh, you never have to, especially whenever you're working with compute grid functionality, uh, you never have to deploy your jars, you never have to move any zip files around. Ignite has a distributed class loader built in, so it automatically keeps track of versioning, and uh, the new classes get automatically deployed, and old, cl old classes get automatically undeployed. So if you look at the compute functionality, the main purpose of the compute is direct uh, support for map reduce. However, in our experience, MapReduce uh, becomes a big overkill for in-memory computing. It was never meant to uh, be uh, uh, to to be uh, to perform well. It was never meant to. It was uh, especially the purpose of MapReduce was to make hours into tens of minutes, maybe. But it was never making minutes into milliseconds or maybe even microseconds. So that's why, uh, in most cases, we see that our customers and our users. Uh, utilize uh, our fork join protocol, which is a special case of MapReduce map and has uh, uh, essentially it does map and reduce steps directly on the client side, and it's a lot faster. And it's fully fault tolerant. Uh, you can uh, uh, kill any node in between, and the jobs will always succeed. As a matter of fact, Ignite has a guarantee that as long as there is one cluster member standing, the no job will ever fail. And we'll actually take a look at that, and we'll see it firsthand. There's also the clustering and compute also has a lot more functionality. For example, there's a scheduling component. You can prioritize your jobs. You can um, split and aggregate your jobs. Uh, you you can distribute simple uh, closures or simple lambdas. Something that I'll show uh, in the example uh, coming up. Uh, there's load balancing component, et cetera, et cetera. So it's a very uh, uh, feature-rich. Uh, uh, component within Ignite. So let's take a look at some coding examples. I'm going to exit from my presentation. I hope everybody can see what I'm doing. And uh, before I start, I want to I want to make sure that everybody knows uh, what uh, that there is Apache Ignite project, and uh, here's its website. Uh, we have a very uh, vibrant and um, active community. So. Uh, everyone is welcome to join the community. Uh, all you need to do is subscribe to our uh, mailing list, uh, to that list, and you can start participating. There are many tickets for you here out, uh, outlined. Some of the interesting work with ActiveMQ, Alka Streamer, Twitter Streamer, Flume Streamer, for example, some, some distributed work here as well. So if you want to contribute, you always can uh, join the product. Uh, but uh, if you want to play with Ignite, just come uh, go visit our download page, and it has the latest download. Uh, the latest official Apache download is 1.0. There is another uh, release, uh, which will be 1.1, going for vote in Apache pretty soon. But if you'd like uh, an early preview of that release, you can download Grid Game Community Edition, uh, which is essentially Apache Ignite uh, uh, Apache Ignite, but uh, probably two, three weeks ahead. So that's uh, exactly the uh, version of uh, Apache Ignite I'll be showing, 102. So let's go ahead and uh, before we start, let's go ahead and start the cluster first. So every time you work with Apache Ignite, you uh, work within the distributed environment, and Apache Ignite made it very easy to start up your cluster directly from your laptop, directly from your development environment. You can always start it up from uh, a console window. I probably should get a lighter one. Uh, by going into uh, Apache Ignite installation folder. Uh, 
And in, in the bin folder of that installation folder, there is Apache Ignite uh, SH script, which you execute and uh, the node will come up. So if you want to start another one, you do the same thing again. And another node also comes up, and nodes automatically discover each other. Uh, as you see, the printout here is that there are two nodes. And this node also discovered the other one, and the printout here is also that there are two nodes. So this is how to start a cluster from command line. I'm going to kill it, and I'm going to also show how to start the cluster from uh, programmatically. So programmatically, I created this class, Ignite Node Startup. And uh, it's a fairly sophisticated class. It has just one line of code, ignition start, and it receives uh, e example Ignite XML shipped uh, uh, directly with Ignite when you download it. The only thing that is con configured there is uh, uh, whatever configuration that file has is to make examples work uh, and show all the features of Ignite. But one of the main things that we will be using is that it enables this pure cost loading, zero deployment, deployment mechanism that I was mentioning. So I'm going to start this class. I'm going to hit around round button. And an Ignite node will start programmatically. I'm going to start another instance of this class. So we're going to have a couple Ignite node training. There's some stuff left over from my previous test. So we are going to have a couple of Ignite node training. And uh, they automatically discover each other. So nodes. So I actually had some previous uh, nodes running, and uh, that's why initially the number of nodes was four, but I just killed the other two nodes. So now we have number of nodes too. And let's actually create our first compute application. What I'm going to do, first of all, I want to let you know that I'm reusing Ignite Examples project. If you download Ignite, it comes with examples. There's a POM file underneath of examples, and you can just import that POM, and the project will automatically uh, be imported. I also enabled Java 8 profile in that project, so I'm going to be using Java 8 syntax for my examples, and we're going to be distributing some lambdas. So for this webinar, I'm going to start from scratch. I will create a class called webinar, Ignite webinar. And here we will define our main class. I'm going to copy the configuration so I don't make any mistakes. So this is how you start Ignite. You basically just uh, uh, call ignition.start method. And uh, the, an instance of Ignite will be brought up. You can start Ignite either in client or server mode. For this, uh, for the compute demo, I'll start it in server mode, and for the data grid demo, I will be starting it as a client mode, just uh, to give a different flavor. So let's actually broadcast uh, uh, our first computation to Ignite. The way we do it, but, uh, uh, we first of all need to get an instance of compute out of Ignite, and this is how we do it. And we call broadcast method on compute. And we will say system hello node. All right, so this is our first computation. As you see, we're utilizing Java 8 syntax. It's a simple closure. And what it will do, it will broadcast this closure to all the nodes, and we have two nodes running here. And every node, including the one we're starting here, 
will print out hello node message. So let's give it a shot. Very start from scratch. Something going. I have a demo effect. Oh, I'm starting the wrong class. I apologize. <laughs> so I need to actually run the class I just created. So it happens during live demos. All right. So we have a hello note printout here. Hello note printout here. And hello note printout here. So as you see, distributing closures and Ignite is very easy. You don't always have to do it when you need to achieve top performance. You simply need to, you, you can just do it whenever you want to uh, simply send a task to a node, send a, uh, some, uh, uh, have your node perform some logic. Maybe look at the cache, maybe pick an entry from a cache, et cetera, et cetera. So Ignite made distributing computations very easy. And notice that uh, this class was automatically deployed to the other nodes as well. Another thing I want to show quickly is that there is very easy to create virtual sub cluster subgroups within Ignite. For example, what if we want to send uh, this computation only to remote nodes and not to the and not have the local node, the, the one that is executing the task, participate? So we can do that too. Uh, Ignite has a concept of cluster groups. Ignite cluster is a cluster group itself, which spans all the nodes, but we want to create a cluster group for remote nodes only. And we pass this cluster group into the, uh, as a parameter whenever we get compute API. So here's the actual, uh, the elegance of this approach is that you, will essentially uh, keep reusing the same API, Ignite Compute API, by bus but based on the cluster group which you pass in into Ignite.Compute method, when, when, uh, which provides this API to you. Uh, this API will work on different topology. It can work on remote nodes, it can work on local nodes, it can, you can assign attributes uh, to nodes and it can work on nodes with uh, certain attributes. It can uh, work only on server nodes or only on client nodes. There's uh, pretty much no limitation to what kind of cluster group you want to create. Here we created a cluster group over, comp uh, over remote nodes. All we do is rerun our example. And as you see, there is no printout here because uh, we wanted to execute only over remote nodes. So remote nodes now still printing out this message. So cluster groups can be either static or dynamic. You can create a cluster group, for instance, for all nodes that have less than 50% CPU load, and uh, compute will distribute computations only to those nodes. To those nodes. So last, I want to say, uh, I want last example I want to do here is uh, uh, essentially uh, showing how to split words and count characters. There's virtually no uh, demo for any product that goes on without uh, counting words or counting. Uh, characters in some sentence, so why should we be any different? So to, to do this, we are going to get rid of this and actually execute a closure on uh, on uh, Ignite, uh, on Ignite Compute Grid. We are, this closure will return. So what we're gonna do is we're going to take a sentence, split it into multiple words, 
send individual awards to different cluster members, have them count the number of char characters in that word, and then send the result back. So the result we're going to get is a collection of integers, which are the counts. And then we're going to say ignite that compute. And we, there is apply method. Apply method. So there are three types of methods: run, call, and apply. Run will execute runnables. Call will execute callables, and apply will execute closures. The only difference between closure and a callable is that closure receives the parameter as well as returns it, and callable only returns the parameter. So we are going to call apply. And it's going to receive a word. And we want to print out this word. And return the length of this word. Out. So. And the second parameter is going to be actual uh, the actual words that we're sending. Let's ignite rules. Split. I have a cheat sheet. All right, I'll just copy that one. No time to debug. So essentially the same thing. Uh, I probably mistyped something in one of my uh, uh, whenever, whenever I was typing that. And what it returns is a collection of results, a collection of integers. And all we do is we are going to add them up. This is not Ignite. This is Java 8. And we are going to print out the sum. One more thing I want to do is I do not want to execute it over remote because we have three cluster nodes I want and three words. I want, to I want to execute this computation on the whole cluster. So I'm not. I'm going. I'm going to have my node participate in it. So let's run it and see what happens. It was going all smoothly when I was rehearsing. Uh, let me restart. So now it executed the uh, the sentence. It split the word uh, the sentence into multiple words. So let's actually go over what happened, and then we'll see the result. We see this uh, uh, that this node executed the word ignite. This node executed the word rules, and this node executed uh, the word Apache. And the total number of characters is 17. Uh, and uh, what we have here is whatever what we did here is we took this sentence again, split it into multiple words. Uh, so uh, ignite actually automatically will create as many closures as you have parameters into the method apply. So now we split this sentence into multiple words. That means we have three parameters, uh, in, uh, a collection of three uh, of size three that gets passed into the method apply. And Ignite looks at that size and actually will clone this closure three times and distribute it to three nodes using its own load balancing mechanism. And uh, 
uh, each word, each closure gets distributed to each node. That's why each node printed out the result, uh, the printed out the phrase executing word. And the total number of words, of words is 17. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to put it into a while loop. And I've been having some issues with my environment here. So I'm hoping this works. If it doesn't, I will move on. And I'm putting a thread sleep just so it doesn't run away on me. And I'm going to execute this again. And it's executing the, uh, this closures, uh, various closures uh, repeatedly, and every node is executing its own work. And it's printing out the output. So now I'm going to kill one of the nodes. So now some nodes get, uh, the, the words get load down in between. But the count is still 17. I'm going to go, I'm going to go ahead and kill this node. And now this node is counting, this node is the last node standing, and it's counting the word, and the count is still 17. We're seeing that the jobs get uh, failed over. We can restart the node, and it will automatically rejoin the computation and start helping out. And we can restart this one again. So just wanted to show that uh, the full torrent aspect of a net, that it can actually, uh, you can actually kill a job at any point, you can kill a node at any point, and it will continue to execute the jobs. So let's stop our client side, uh, leave, the servers, leave the servers running, and let's move on, move on to the data grid example. Oops, wrong. So data grid is probably one of the biggest components available within Apache Ignite. And uh, essentially, you can look at it as a distributed key value store. Uh, it can be either a replicated store or a partition store. Uh, you, and you can interact with it as you would interact with a hash map. In other ways, you would in, in other, uh, way you would interact with your key value store would be with a data grid can be using uh, SQL queries. So uh, and the third way, actually, we just saw it, uh, would be using computations. So there are three APIs that you can use to interact uh, with the data that is stored in a cache. So for, as far as the SQL goes, Ignite is ANSI, uh, ANSI 99 compliant. So you, there's virtually no limitation to what kind of SQL you can process on top of Ignite, Ignite. And we will see it today. I'll run several SQL queries, and we will take a look at what's possible. Uh, Ignite is also, uh, you can also transact on the data uh, in a distributed fashion, and you can also write through data to an underlying persistent store. And Ignite uh, actually uh, has an automatic integration with most, most of the RDBMS stores. Uh, for non-RDBMS stores, uh, you would have to implement a cache store interface that is available as a part of Jcache API, uh, which Ignite implements. But for RDBMS stores, uh, you can just connect your Oracle or Postgres or MySQL to Ignite. Ignite will automatically inspect the schema, automatically generate indexes, and automatically uh, provide a store for you to use. So uh, it's in a plug-and-play fashion. So you can plug-and-play pretty much any uh, RDBMS data store into Ignite. And whenever you do that, uh, your, your database, uh, uh, assuming that your database is transaction, will participate in cache transactions. So whenever a distributed cache transaction happens, it will merge the database transaction with it. So if at any point any cluster member fails uh, or a database fails, uh, the transaction will make the best attempt to commit. And if it cannot commit, it will roll back. But the cluster will always remain in a strongly consistent state at every point, regardless of the failure. There, I should also mention that Ignite has 
on heap uh, on heap storage and off heap storage and uh, off heap storage is important when whenever you uh, working with large memory spaces and uh, uh, you know as you may be aware that uh, java on its own does not deal with uh, uh, large memory spaces very well so if you allocate more than 15 gigabyte or maybe 20 gigabyte of heap to to a jvm you in, uh, inevitably will see large garbage collection pauses. And uh, and to mitigate that, Ignite actually provides off-heap storage where you would allocate as much memory as your application needs uh, uh, if Ignite wasn't even there. That's the amount of memory you would allocate on-heap. And the rest you could allocate off-heap. So for example, you could allocate five gigabyte on-heap and 200 gigabyte off-heap and uh, Ignite would uh, store 200 gigabytes outside of JVM, so garbage, garbage collector will never even know that this data exists. But it's still in memory, it's still lightning fast, it's still a pointer away to access. So it's a, it just, for us to access that data is just the referencing a pointer, so it's very fast. Uh, another important point is that indexes for SQL are also kept of heap. So you can uh, indexes usually take about maybe 30, maybe even 40 percent of your data, depending on how much you index. And uh, uh, if you, for instance, uh, working with 100 gigabyte of memory, your indexes can easily uh, take up between 20 and 40 gigabytes. So that's already too much for JVM on, uh, to handle on heap. So that's important. It's very important that Ignite can handle indexes of heap as well. So to summarize, there, uh, there are three ways you want to, you, you can deref, uh, interfer, interact with your data. One is using standard key value API, uh, which is essentially, uh, probably you can think about it as accessing by a primary key. And there is another way you can, uh, another way is using SQL, which is all about secondary indexes and accessing secondary fields. Uh, in SQL, essentially, you can index into your uh, object type, into your class type. So fields become columns and classes become tables, and you will actually see that. And the third way is map reviews. So let's take a look at some uh, cache examples uh, uh, the, uh, that are available in Ignite. Again, I'm going to start my idea. And I will review, uh, reuse my class here. And what we're going to do here is create a simple cache. I'm going to configure it with one backup. So I'm going to say cache configuration. And let's store integers and strings in it, just for simplicity. And I'm going to say new cache configuration. And we are going to call it this cache webinar. It's a dynamic cache. Uh, it wasn't pre-configured, uh, so we are going to configure it after the Ignite starts here. So in Ignite, caches can be started and stopped at any point, and configuration is fully distributed across all the nodes. You can actually control the topology on which you want to deploy your cache and pick different nodes for different caches. So I'm going to configure number of backups to one. And I will start Ignite, Ignite Cache. There is a cool method called get or create cache. It will create one if there isn't one created, or get one if there is one created already. And let's populate our cache with some data. So for Uh, let's define a count variable. So we populated 10 keys into cache, and now let's get those keys from, cache, from the cache. So I'm 
going just to copy this and print out that. So very simple example. It puts in 20 values, in, uh, 10 values into cache, and then get 10 values in, from the cache. So let's go ahead and try that. The cache is going to be deployed automatically on the cluster members that we have started. And as you see, they actually our node joined and left the cluster. And, as, uh, and then we retrieve these keys, and they're all there. But since we configured the cache with one backup, it can survive uh, a one node crash. You can actually configure as many backups as you like, depending on the level of redundancy that you may wish to have within your application. What I'm going to do is comment out the puts and re-execute this example. So now we're not doing any puts. but the data is still there. So that means that cache survived the failure of our node and uh, uh, kept, the, kept the data uh, in memory. You can also transact on that data. You can also query that data. Uh, so one of the interesting examples that I'm not going to quote from scratch is our query demo that I prepared for this webinar. Uh, I'm going to kill this guy. The nodes are still running. And here we are going to create another cache. Uh, here we're going to have uh, two types of objects, person and company. And both of them are going to be stored in partitioned cache, which is default in Ignite. And both of them are going to be collocated based on uh, company ID. So all persons that work for the same company will be stored on the same node, uh, on the same cluster number where the company is, uh, company is stored. And we do that so we can, uh, in order to be able to do distributed joins the, and co uh, collocate computations with data, uh, it, it, it is very useful to collocate data that gets access together. It, uh, it significantly can improve performance and scalability of the application. So here's how we collocate. We have, again, two caches, persons and companies. Again, the caches are dynamic. We create them on the fly. Uh, we do not. Uh, have to configure them in advance. And uh, each cache, we, I, uh, we would have to specify which types we want to index. Uh, in uh, the person's cache, it has affinity key and person class. And the company class has an integer class. Company cache has integer class and, and company class. And I will uh, briefly explain what that means. Let's take a look. In, first of all, let's look inside of a company class. So. Uh, Fairly simple Java class. It has two fields, name and ID. And uh, what you should pay attention to is this annotation, query SQL field annotation that can be either indexed or not indexed. But that's how you tell Ignite what to index and what not to index. And if we look at person class, also very simple, fairly simple Java class, but uh, it uh, uh, also has some annotations in it and uh, some of the indexes that get created. And uh, note that we also annotate index as SQL field, but we don't want to uh, create, uh, we also annotate name as SQL field, but we do not want to create index for it because we're not gonna query by it. So those are uh, person and company class. Let's take a look at the cache. So we created uh, two configuration classes. We set our classes that we want to work with as index types in Ignite. And again, we call our famous get or create cache method, which will create a cache if one wasn't created. Another thing to pay attention to is affinity key here, uh, affinity key class in person. And the reason we use affinity key is because we do not want person to be collocated based on person ID. We want person to be collocated based on company ID. And if we look at populate method, that's exactly what happens. We create a couple of companies and a few persons. And person 
uh, the second parameter here, one and two here, uh, first, two, first two ones and second twos, uh, are company IDs. So first two persons are associated with company one, which is grid game, and second two persons are associated with company two, which is other company. And when we store the person in cache, companies are pretty straightforward. You just put uh, key is ID and value is the company. Persons who create, for persons who create affinity key, and we use company ID as affinity parameter for the persons. Uh, for the person. So this company ID will be used to route the person object to the same node where the company is stored. And the value, of course, is the person. So we store four persons in the cache. Two work for a grid game. One is myself and another is Nikita. And two work for other company. And the last parameter is salary. As you see, Nikita and myself are underpaid. And uh, we're going to be issuing a few queries on um, all of this data and see what happens. So the first query we want to run is basic select. Let's select uh, all uh, persons from the cache where, uh, where values uh, where, uh, that have salary less than a certain parameter. And then we pass a parameter of 3,000. Standard GDBC-like syntax. You use question marks for parameters. And uh, what gets returned is a collection of person uh, uh, of cash entries that have a key and a value for that entry. So key would be affinity key, and value would be person here. And we create a SQL query object that contains this data, and we pass this SQL query object into our uh, query method from our cache, persons is a cache. Where is it? Yeah, here. So persons is a cache, and the cache has query method that can uh, uh, accept different query objects. Uh, SQL query is one of them. There's also scan query, SQL field query, text query, Ignite supports Lucene based uh, text indexing. So there are different queries you can pass into Ignite. And uh, then uh, when query executes, it actually returns the result in paginated form. But if we know that result set is small, and we want to get all results at once, we can call get all method. And here we get a list of cache entries that have key and value. And we print it out. So let's go ahead and execute it. There, don't worry about these queries yet. Uh, we're not printing out these results. So just this result will be printed out. I'm going to hide those so they don't get on the way. Wrong one, again, as usual. So here we got two persons. Uh, the only two persons out of four that get less than 3,000 in salary is myself and Dmitry and Nikita. So the query worked. It returned a collection of cash entries that matched our query criteria. However, here we returned the whole object back. Ignite has a very cool uh, way to process queries where you can actually select the fields you would like to return. And as I mentioned, there's no limitation to what kind of SQL you execute. So in my next example, I'm going to comment out this printout. In my next example, I will actually uh, select name of a person, company, uh, uh, a name of the company, and a salary from our cache. And I'll do that. So person name and salary uh, belong to the person class and company name belong to the company class. So we need to do a distributed join. Given that person and companies, uh, persons are co-located with companies they work for, this join is going to be very easy. Uh, we say we're standard SQL syntax, as you see. Uh, we say uh, we join based on company ID. And we pass company name, uh, and we pass company name as a parameter. Uh, I get a message from Dane that it's time for Q&A, so I'll be really quick. And we execute this query, and uh, let's take a look at the results. We execute this query for grid game. Oh, I forgot to uncomment the printout. So let's execute again. Mm 
Again, so there are two employees in the company Grid Gain, and we printed out these results. Dmitry works for Grid Gain with a salary of 1,000, and Nikita works for Grid Gain with a salary of 2,000. So I'm going to come on to this one, and this is going to be the last example. We are definitely not going to get to streaming. Uh, so last, in the last example, I want to show some more complex queries with some aggregations and some group by. So let's select uh, average salary across uh, all the companies we have uh, we're storing in cash. So again, we're issuing st standard SQL. We select an average of salary. We can use S. We can use aliases for field names. Um, uh, and we also want to select company name, so we will know which company this average salary belongs to. From person and company, we join based on uh, company ID. And we group by company name, and we order by average salary, and let's say this one here. So the highest salary will come first, and uh, lesser salaries will come uh, second. High average will come first, and lesser will come second. So let's go ahead and execute that. I'm going to uncomment results, and I'm almost done. And as you see, people in other companies get, uh, in average, $3,500, and people in grid game get an average of $1,500. So grid game is a great place to work for, and please join us. Uh, so that's it. Uh, we, that will conclude my data grid demo. And I think Dan wants to move to Q&A, so I'm, going to be, I'm happy to answer any questions you might have. Yep, that's right. Uh, Thanks, Dimitri. That was excellent. And uh, we do have a number of questions, uh, so let's try to, to, to jump into them. It may be that you've answered some of these in the course of uh, the presentation, so if that's the case, you know, just uh, you can move past them real quick. Um, but let's go ahead and start with this one. Um, does the script have to be started, or can you just run the project and have it start up? And this is in reference to deploying our API service on AWS instances. No, you can uh, uh, you can uh, make sure that in uh, whenever instance comes up, Ignite will be started within that instance. So okay, the answer great. is uh, you can start it automatically. All right, excellent. All right, next question: uh, Does Apache Ignite include a JDBC driver, or is that just yeah. included in the commercial version of Grid Game? Apache Ignite does include JDBC driver. And uh, it's essentially available with the product. Uh, just download it, and you can connect to it using any JDBC client. And that will give you interactive as a, a way of querying uh, data that is stored in Ignite. Okay, super. Now, uh, and Dimitri, I'll leave it to you to decide how much detail to go in on some of these questions. Um, mm -hmm. So here's one. Uh, what's the main difference between Redis and Ignite? And you well, might need I mean, to explain I'll, what Redis is for anybody who doesn't know. Redis is a pretty cool product that actually allows to store uh, uh, some of the primitive data types in a cache and group them and query and access them in a, uh, various ways. I think one of the main differences, first of all, I want to come back to Apache Ignite uh, diagram. First of all, I want to say Apache Ignite uh, is not just caching. It's also compute, service grid, streaming, and a lot, a lot more. So I think one of the main differences would be this rich feature set of Apache Ignite. Another is just if you now remove all that and just compare the data grid, caching capability, it would certainly be transactions, certainly be SQL, query support, et cetera, et cetera. So those would be the main differences in my view. Okay, good. Um, here's another one. Uh, how do you configure Ignite kernel metrics reporting when the grid is running. Uh, I want to only show those metrics that I'm interested in, or how do you disable it? Uh, the, metrics, uh, the metrics are available on cluster groups. So again, uh, if you remember, I have uh, cluster groups defined. So cluster group has metrics, so you can create a cluster group over, over any subset of cluster nodes, and uh, then you can get met metrics from it. So if I have um, any code here that, uh, so essentially you would do uh, something like this, cluster group 
GRP equals uh, mm -hmm. a cluster 40 modes, for instance, or for let's do for servers, and then you do GRP metrics, and that will return cluster metrics. And cluster metrics have um, cluster metrics have quite a few methods in them. So it's uh, if you, I'm going to actually open the structure, and there's quite a lot of quite a few metrics available in Ignite for any cluster group. And uh, essentially, you can define cluster groups as you like over remote node, local node, any kind of custom topology you want to create. That's it, Ben. Okay. Okay, good. Now, here's one that just came in, uh, but it's one that we get, you know, almost every presentation we do, so I'm going to kind of skip that one ahead. Um, and that is, can you give a comparison of Apache Spark versus Apache Ignite? Right, yeah, we get that a lot. And Spark is a great product, and Ignite is a great product in my view. Uh, definitely, probably the biggest difference is that Ignite allows uh, data writes, and Spark most uh, pretty much works on a read-only data set for analytics, uh, and works very well on it. But uh, Ignite would uh, also provide some features for analytical space. For example, you can uh, do interactive SQL with, with Ignite. You can uh, query it uh, using SQL and do data analysis based on it. You can stream data for, into Ignite, which is also something similar to Spark. But uh, one thing that you cannot, uh, wouldn't be able to do in Spark and you can do only in Ignite would be uh, transactions. So you can, uh, Ignite is a very fast transactional engine, probably one of the fastest available today. Uh, we constantly benchmark against uh, other products and I'm actually writing many blogs about benchmarks uh, nowadays. Uh, and uh, our transactions probably would be the main differentiator there. Okay. Thank you for that one. Uh, and then uh, here's the next question. Uh, are there Scala-specific APIs or simply rely on Scala's ability to work with Java? Uh, that's a good question. There is a, there is a Scala DSL. It uh, has very nice compute and uh, data grid APIs associated with it. We have not been able to port streaming and service grid functionality to Scala DSL yet, but it will come. Okay. Um, how would you limit, i.e., using cluster groups with node attributes where compute jobs are executed utilizing direct compute task slash compute job API approach? I hope that made sense to you. <laughs> I, so, I hope so, too. I hope that makes sense to everybody. So the question is, how do you utilize probably a compute task API? And I believe uh, that the best way to explain it is uh, look at the examples that are shipped with Ignite. And there is an Ignite task example. So y you would create a compute task in Ignite that has split method and a reduce method. It also has a result method for asynchronous result uh, uh, processing. Uh, it's simply not overridden here. But uh, then you create a task like that and you would execute it Pass and execute, uh, pass and your task into execute method. So All the task right. is responsible. Oh. Uh, let me just give a little more. The task is responsible for splitting your uh, computation into multiple pieces, uh, sending them across, and receiving results back uh, asynchronously and aggregating them. So it, it does the whole fork join in one, essentially. And uh, this is how you would execute it. Okay, great. Um, all right, next question. Does Ignite support any push technologies? Can we register a client as a listener for a specific cache item and get notified when the item gets changed in the cache? Oh, absolutely. I think the question is whether you can have continuous notifications uh, or continuous queries in Ignite. So any client can subscribe any kind of listener uh, to the cache and can get continuous notifications uh, from the cache about uh, the data. This listener comes with two filters. One is remote filter and another is local. Uh, if for a notification to come to the client first, it would have to pass remote filter and uh, then it would have to pass local filter on the client. The remote filter is probably is the most important piece here because 
it actually controls how much traffic you send across your network. So if there's something you absolutely do not need, you can filter it out before you turn on it. Okay. Um, great. Now, um, here's the next question. What kind of performance overhead is incurred when accessing a DB via the cache versus direct access or other in-memory caching database products? Well, I'm not sure about any other in-memory cache database product uh, overhead, uh, but if you uh, compare, for instance, in-memory performance for data access versus database performance, I think you would, it depends on the access, depends on the amount of data you're scanning. For instance, if you have a scanning over a terabyte of data, it will be pretty slow regardless of, uh, if you're doing a full scan, it will be pretty slow regardless of which product you're doing it. Uh, but if you're accessing data based on indexes or based on primary keys, I think the overhead that in-memory product will pro uh, uh, provide here is minimal. It's almost negligible compared to the overhead that database would provide. Okay, super. Next question. Uh, and we'll probably uh, have to end with this one. There's a bunch of other questions, but... Um, you know, we're coming up against the, the end of our time. So uh, depending on how long you take on this one, this may be the last one, maybe one more. But uh, here you go. Is Ignite suitable for processing financial tick data? Uh, I'm thinking KDB plus. I'm going to assume uh, that uh, uh, the, it's, uh, the question is whether Ignite can be used for processing uh, financial tick data essentially large amounts of data that get streamed from market into your product. And that's actually part of our streaming, and that's exactly what streaming does. And I think the financial tick data can be easily processed with, with Ignite sliding window approach. Uh, and we have already users uh, doing that based on uh, the previous version of Ignite, which was Gridian Open Source Edition. Uh, so essentially you would stream data into the system, you would configure some sort of a sliding window, maybe based on amount of entries, maybe based on time, you can configure a window based on, for instance, you can say I only want to have last five seconds of data, and everything else will be automatically evicted. And then you query and you process that data, you can transact that data in any way, you can persist that data, there's virtually no limitation to what you can do with that data. Okay. Uh, you know what, uh, I think there may be time for one quick uh, question. Uh, if, if, if you can answer this one quickly, go for it. If not, uh, we'll, we'll uh, answer this afterwards. But is there an ODBC driver? What about the integration with some of the BI tools that need ODBC drivers? Well, unfortunately, there isn't uh, an ODBC driver for Ignite yet. There is only a JDBC. So I would suggest right now for to, if you need to integrate with a product that has ODBC driver to have JDBC to ODBC bridge. I know those are not always pleasant to use, but that would be the way to go right now. And we will definitely uh, get community involvement to actually create an ODBC bridge for Ignite as well. It's not, uh, we, we already got several questions about that. Okay, super. Thanks for that, uh, Dimitri. And uh, let's go ahead and in with that, that was a good uh, um, segue to prompt people to head on over to the website at ignite.incubator.apache.org and see about joining the community. Um, definitely uh, looking for more people in the community. Um, and I want to thank everyone for attending today. Uh, we will be sending out the presentation, uh, the, the PowerPoint, to everyone in an email. Um, and uh, also we want to go ahead and remind you to uh, put in some uh, feedback, and that will help us to improve our presentation uh, in, in future webinars. And also uh, stay tuned for part two in this series uh, on Apache Ignite coding examples, which will be coming up in the next few weeks. Um, with that, um, I want to thank you Mr. again for attending this afternoon. Oh, Dimitri? Yeah, just one last thing I want to mention that uh, we are going to, Grid Game is going to be hosting uh, the, the first uh, in-memory computing summit in April, uh, in June, June 29 and 30th. So if you're interested in either speaking or simply attending, we have very interesting sponsors and very interesting presenters. Uh, definitely take advantage of IMC Summit. And the website is imcsummit.org.
Very good. Thanks, Dimitri, and thank you all for attending today. Have a great rest of the day. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye.